Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic is periodontal ligament. Periodontal ligament is one of the four component of periodontium. So periodontium is a structure which supports the tooth. So it includes two hard tissues and two soft tissues. Hard tissues are cementum and alveolar bone. Soft tissues are gingiva and periodontal ligament. Gingiva we have already covered. So today's session is about periodontal ligament. So let's get into the details of periodontal ligament. So periodontal ligament, the name itself gives an idea. Peri means around and don't means tooth. So the structures which is around the tooth. So the ligament which is surrounding the tooth is periodontal ligament. So as I mentioned, it is one of the four components of periodontium. So it is defined as the periodontal ligament is a connective tissue that surrounds the root and connects it to the bone. Okay, so this orange color is periodontal ligament. So it is connective tissue that surrounds the root and connects it to bone. So it starts from root to the bone. And it communicates with the marrow spaces through vascular channels in the bone. So it is something or it is a connective tissue which surrounds the root and connects it to the bone. It was given by Carenza and it has got many names. The synonyms include periodontal membrane, alveolodental ligament, desmodont, pericement, gumphosis or dental periosteum. So this is a very important essay in dental histology. So this is a very frequently asked essay and there are lots of short notes will be asked from this chapter. So you might get a question like explain about gum forces and write about its principal fibers or draw a neat picture and explain about its structure function. So you might be knowing the complete answer of periodontal ligament but you might not be knowing that gum forces is periodontal ligament. So always make sure that you remember all these names such as periodontal membrane, alveolodental ligament because it connects alveolar bone and tooth, desmodont, pericementum because it covers cementum, gum forces and dental periosteum. So these are the synonyms of periodontal ligament. Now let's see the extension of periodontal membrane. So this is the periodontal membrane I have drawn in orange color lines. So it extends from coronal direction. It is continuous with lamina propria of gingiva. So you will be knowing what is lamina propria of gingiva because in the gingival session we had uh, well uh, covered the connective tissue part of gingiva. So this is uh, this pink color is the connective tissue part of gingiva. So it is continuous with or it um, it is associated with lamina propria of gingiva at the coronal side. So this is the crown part, this is the root part. So we say this is the coronal side, this is the apical side. Okay. So in coronal side it is continuous with lamina propria and it is demarcated by the alveolar crest fibers. So here it is alveolar crest fibers because this is a bone. This is a tip of the bone known as alveolar crest. So such fibers are demarcating this coronal extension of periodontal ligament and at the root apex it merges with the dental pulp okay so at the root apex see this is the root apex and this pink color is pulp so at the root apex it merges with the dental pulp and it ranges in width from 0 0.15 to 0 0.38 mm so 0 0.15 to 0 0.38 mm is the width of periodontal ligament is the width 0 0.15 to 0 0.38 so next is the shape of uh, periodontal ligament so it is thinnest around the middle third of the root okay so this is a root portion so this is middle portion it is thinnest around the middle portion or middle third of the root with an hourglass appearance this is an hourglass appearance it is broadened at the coronal and apical side, but it is the thinnest at the middle third of root. Okay, so this is a coronal third, this is the middle third, this is the apical third. So it is thinnest 
at the middle third so it looks like a hourglass with widened coronal and apical third and we have a radio opaque boundaries of periodontal ligament so when we take a x-ray so we can see an empty space so periodontal ligament will be shown in x-ray as radio lucent area that means it is completely black so there is no structure within it so the x-ray will not produce any image so it will be very black in color which is known as radiolucent but it has two white borders which is known as radio opaque borders so what are those white borders one is a alveolar bone and other one is a cementum so it is outlined by alveolar bone and cementum so in radiograph it looks like a radio lucent area with radio opaque boundaries so it is between cementum this is cementum and alveolar bone so these are the mineralized structures so it will appear as radio opaque or white areas so it appears as black area between two white lines that is radio lucent area between radio opaque lines so the average width changes based on the age around 10 to 15 years it is around 0.21 mm and 30 to 50 30 to 50 0.21 mm in 10 to 15 years and 0.18 mm around 30 to 50 years and it is around 0.15 so as the age increases the width of this periodontal ligament decreases and also it changes according to time of eruption at function or hyperfunction time of eruption it is around 0.1 to 0.5 it is very highest at function it is around 0.2 to 0.3 this one 0.15 to 0.3 but hypofunction it again reduces now let's move on to the development of periodontal ligament so how does it develop so we have seen it develops from dental follicles hope you remember our bell stage advanced bell stage of tooth formation we have what stage gap stage bell stage we have learned dentin and pulp develops from dental papilla and cementum periodontal ligament alveolar bone develops from dental follicle or dental sac so it is developed from dental follicle so what happens it begins with root formation and prior to the tooth eruption so at later bell stage when amelogenesis and dentinogenesis are well advanced the internal and external lamina so we know that the internal and external lamina when the stratum intermedium collapses the outer enamel epithelium and inner enamel epithelium approximates and it becomes two layer cells two layer epithelium with outer enamel and inner enamel epithelium so it forms or it the cervical loop of enamel organ it becomes bent and makes this double layered epithelial root sheath and this root sheath which proliferates apically and forms the future root and forms the future root okay so this is how it forms outer enamel epithelium inner enamel epithelium it bend at root portion or the cervical portion and it proliferates apically so you know what is apically towards the root apically and forms the future root so what happens there will be hardwick's epithelial root sheath at advanced bell stage which covers the root area so this root sheath is continuous so this root sheath is continuous so it loses its structural integrity and forms the remnants which is known as epithelial rest of molasses so epithelial rest of molasses forms so once the epithelial rest of molasses forms what happens there will be connective tissue so there will be the connective tissue okay this is all let it be connective tissue of dental follicle so from dental follicle the connective tissue cells from dental follicle migrate to the newly formed root of dentin so it will be like this so 
the remnants gives the entrance gives the pathway of proliferation towards the root dentin okay before it was a hardwick's epithelial root sheath this is hardwick's epithelial root sheath it was a continuous layer after that it loses its structural integrity so the dental follicle which is present outside continuous proliferation happens and it goes between the epithelial rest of molasses and forms a periodontal ligament so that is how it forms and dental follicle cell basically produces fibroblasts cementoblasts and osteoblasts this is collagen this is cementum and this is bone okay collagen is a principal fiber of periodontal ligament so ultimately dental follicle give rise to periodontal ligament cementum and alveolar bone so as the root formation continues cells in the perifollicular mason give give rise to uh, there there will be active uh, synthesis of uh, collagen fibers and this collagen fibers assemble and it forms as a bundle on the bone and cemental surface okay so it becomes bundles so from the dental follicle there will be active synthesis and this fibers will be formed and it will be attached to cementum and bone so this is how it happens this is the alveolar bone proper this is the periodontal ligament space and this is the root cementum so as the growth happens this is the root cemental area this is the alveolar bone area there will be a continuous proliferation mitosis happens and ultimately it joins and it become periodontal ligament so we have a mature periodontal ligament three areas that is bone bone related region bone related region and the middle region and the cementum related region the bone related region is basically very rich in cells and the middle zone is fewer cells with thinner collagen fibers and the cemental related region which is dense and ordered collagen fibers are present so bone related region associated with alveolar bone proper middle region it is thinner and thick bundles of fibers are seen in cemental region because this is a tooth area this is a bone area see this is a tooth this is a bone so this is the picture i have showing here just the opposite here it is a cementum is a alveolar bone but here it is alveolar bone here is a cementum so this is just expanded picture is okay if i draw this picture it will be like this so this is how it forms this is the enlarged version this is an enlarged version of this area but only thing you need to think opposite this is alveolar bone this is root but here it is a root this is a alveolar bone okay so that is how it forms you can see the various formation when the tooth erupts where okay, this is covered within the mm, gingiva so there is little bit of periodontal ligament formation as the tooth erupts there will be more and more periodontal ligament formation when it is completely erupted the bundles will be formed and principal fibers will be completely around the root so what are the functional changes happens in periodontal ligament so the basically periodontal ligament is always subjected to change when there is increased functional demand the width may increase as much 50 percentage of the present width because more function more functional demand more stress it need to bear so it will increase its width fifth up to 50 percentage it can increase and fiber bundles also increase in thickness when there is a increased functional demand but when functional demand decreases the narrowing of periodontal ligament and decrease in number and thickness of fibers happens so it can modify itself based on the functional changes so that's the beginning part of periodontal ligament i explained to you about its extension its shape and the in detail about the development so you need to study properly about the tooth formation that is bud stage cap stage and bell stage then only it is easy to understand if you don't know that chapter properly it's very difficult because you need to know what is hardwick's epithelial rest of hardwick epithelial root sheath and epithelial rest of molasses and how this 
collagen fibers starting from dental follicle to the cement man bone so it is a hmm, very important chapter because uh, this is a commonly asked essay question so the short notes might be hardwick's epithelial root sheath epithelial cell rest of melasses so all this uh, might come as short notes so next thing is uh, the structural uh, elements that is cells and extracellular elements so this is the introduction part development extension shapes and how the uh, periodontal ligament changed according to the functional demands now we move on to the structure the cells and extracellular elements of periodontal ligament thank you so now we have the structure of periodontal ligament mm. so we have basically two categories one is cells and the next one is extracellular substance so under cells we have basically five categories the first category is synthetic cells the cells which produces other cells that is osteoblast which produces bone fibroblast cementoblast the second one is resorptive cell so which destruct the cell osteoclast fibroblast and cementoclast which destructs bone fibers and cementum third one is progenitor cell then epithelial rest of melasses and defense cell so the basic defense cell mast cell macrophages and eosinophils so synthetic synthetic cells we have osteoblast fibroblast cementoblast resorptive cell the destructive cells so osteoclast fibroclast and cementoclast this is blast means create clast means destruct progenitor cell epithelial rest of melasses we had seen when the sheath was disrupted the hardwick's epithelial root sheath once it loses its continuity the remnants will be on the periodontal ligament as epithelial rest of melasses and the common defense cell and in extracellular substances that means the main bulk of substances we have fibers and ground substances in fibers we have collagen fibers and oxytalent fibers in ground substances we have glycosaminoglycans and glycoproteins now we'll move on to the our principal or the chief component of cells sector that is synthetic cell that is fibroblast which is the architect which is a builder which is a caretaker of periodontal ligament which is very predominant in the periodontal ligament so basically it originates uh, from cemental surface and also from alveolar bone surface cemental surface it originates from ectomesenchyme of investing layer of dental papilla and dental follicle from the cemental surface whereas the alveolar bone side it is originated from perivascular mesenchyme so both sides it originates towards the cemental surface it is originates from the ectomesenchyme we have seen in dental papilla and dental follicle and in alveolar bone side it is originated from perivascular mesenchyme so these cells which is uh, oriented with their long axis parallel to the direction of collagen fibers so how the collagen fibers are oriented so it just follows the long axis parallel to the collagen fibers and which is aligned along between collagen fibers and appearance governed by the surrounding matrix so these fibroblasts of periodontal ligament generate an organizational pattern as they have the ability to both synthesize and shape the proteins of extracellular matrix so it has both the properties that is the ability to synthesize and shape the proteins of extracellular matrix so these proteins also it can shape and it can synthesize uh synthesize the other elements also 
So the certain fibers or the fibrils form bundles to get inserted into tooth and bone which is known as sharp piece fibers. This is very important sharp piece fibers. Commonly asked short note. So what is sharp piece fibers? So certain fibers or fibrils in fibroblast it gets bundled or it gets forms in a bundle and get inserted into tooth and bone. So once it is embedded in the wall of alveolus or tooth, these fibers calcify to a certain degree. Which fibers? Sharpies fibers calcify to a certain degree and are associated with an abundance of non-collagenous proteins found in the bone. So these proteins are known as osteopontin and bone sialoprotein. So these are associated with Sharpies fibers. So what are the functions of um, fibroblast? Okay, not osteoblast. Functions of fibroblast. So the first function is to synthesize collagen. First is a collagen synthesize, then synthesize fibrils, organize fibrous network and generate force on tooth eruption, produce extracellular matrix of periodontal ligament which has capacity to give rise to cementoblast and osteoblast so fibroblast can give rise to osteoblast and also cementoblast it maintains a normal width of periodontal ligament which synthesize and shape the proteins of extracellular matrix i mentioned earlier in which collagen fibers form bundles and insert into the bone or tooth as sharp piece fibers so it can shape the extra cellular matrix proteins so it regulates collagen turnover by phagocytosis by phagocytosing the old collagen fibers now we'll move on to the second synthetic cell that is osteoblast these cells uh, covers the periodontal surface of alveolar bone which line the tooth socket and are cuboidal in shape with prominent round nucleus at the basal end of the cell which has rough endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria and vesicles which are very active and abundant in osteoblast. Microfilaments are prominent beneath the cell membrane and this cell contacts one another through desmosomes and tight junction. What about cementoblast? Cementoblast they lines the surface of cementum uh, which are cuboidal with large vesicle nucleus with one or more nucleoli and all the organelles required for protein synthesis and secretion are present in cementoblasts. There are two types of uh, cells that is cells with uh, cytoplasmic process and cells without cytoplasmic process. So cells actively depositing cellular cementum exhibit the cytoplasmic processes and basophilic cytoplasm but whereas a cellular cementum producing cells with which doesn't have prominent cytoplasmic processes. So th these are the two types of mm, cells which you see in cemento cementoblast type cells. Okay. Now let's see the uh, resorptive cell. Those are osteoclast, fibroclast, and cementoclast. So next we have. Resorptive cells. Resorptive cells are nothing but which uh, distracts the cells, which is doing the function just opposite of synthetic cells. They create this resorptive cells, they distract the cells. So, the most common one is osteoclast, which basically they resorb bone and tend to be very large and multinucleated but can also be small and mononuclear. So these multinucleated osteoclasts are formed by fusion of precursor cells similar to circulating monocytes. The part of plasma membrane lying adjacent which is uh, being resorbed is raised in characteristic folds so if you can see the folds over here the folds so this is known as 
ruffled or striated border so the part of plasma membrane lying adjacent to bone that is being resorbed is raised in characteristic folds which is known as ruffled or striated border so these are found against the bony surface occupying shallow depression which is known as how ships lacunae so there are many short notes will be coming from this one the ruffled or striated border how ships lacunae and one more thing we have that is clear zone so you can see this area which is devoid of all the organelles so this ruffled border is separated from the rest of plasma membrane by a zone specialized membrane that is closely applied to the bone okay so it is separated from the rest of plasma membrane by a zone of specialized membrane which is very closely applied to the bone and the underlying cytoplasm this is a cytoplasm which tend to be devoid of organelles and that is known as clear zone okay so in osteoclast we have learned what is ruffled or striated border that is this peculiar appearance that plasma which is uh, plasma cells plasma membrane which is close to the bone and it is being resorbed which gives that because resorption will not happen in a linear fashion it will be uh, folding uh, foldable uh, fashion it happens and this uh, seen in a particular depression that this osteoclast seen in particular depression known as how ships lacunae and there will be a clear zone which is a cytoplasm which is devoid of organelles whereas a cementoclast cementoclast the peculiar thing about cementoclast they does not remodel okay so these cementoclast are not usually found in the periodontal ligament because it doesn't remodel so these cells seen when there is pathological conditions or during resorption of deciduous teeth and when regressive forces are applied because we uh, forcefully apply uh, forces that um, the forces are being applied on orthodontic therapy so in orthodontic therapy we apply forces that is intentional forces in that cases we can see cementoclast so these cementoclasts resemble osteoclast and are located in depression and cementum resembling how ships lacunae okay so this is not usually seen in periodontal ligament it comes when there is a pathological problem uh, resorption of deciduous bone and the orthodontic forces and one more thing these cells not only just resorb cementum but also they can destroy destroy dentin and enamel so this is also known as odontoclast so odonto means tooth so clast is something which is uh, destructing structure so this is also known as odontoclast because it destruct enamel and dentin now we have our third category so we finished fibroclast is nothing but cells which destruct fib fibers or collagen so osteoblast creates bone fibroblast creates collagen cementoblast create cementum osteoclast destruct bone and fibroclast destruct collagen cementoclast destruct cementum now we are moving on to our third cell which is progenitor cell so progenitor cell is uh, all connective tissue including pdl which contains progenitor cells that have the capacity to undergo mitotic division so mitosis is the basic basis of replication of cells so these are undifferentiated mesenchymal cells that have a perivascular location within uh, around 5 micrometers of blood vessels so when stimulated appropriately these cell undergo mitosis and what are the cells will be formed so we may have fibroblast osteoblast or cementoblast that in turn produces collagen bone and cementum so progenitor cells are the cells which produces osteoblast fibroblast and cementoblast okay so this should be here progenitor as a primitive cells that itself give rise to osteoblast fibroblast cementoblast okay so that is the synthetic cell of synthetic cell we can say and we have epithelial rest of molasses we already discussed it there will be epithelial root sheath that is hardwick's epithelial root sheath which undergo 
uh, lysis and there will be epithelial rest of molasses because it loses its continuity and the epithelial rest will be seen along the root surface as network strands or islands or tubule like structures which will be parallel to the surface of root which has around 25 micrometer in diameter so their function is not yet clear but they could be involved in periodontal repair and regeneration so it is most numerous in apical and cervical areas children it is very numerous as we age uh, the number reduces these cells may proliferate to form cysts and tumors and one more thing we have the cells that the epithelial rest of cells undergo calcification to become cementicles okay so what will we learn we learn ruffled or striated border how ships lack on a clear zone odontoclast and cementicles these all are short notes so osteoclast osteoplast fibroblast fibroclast progenitor cell epithelial rest of molasses hardwick's epithelial root sheath cementicles all will be asked for short notes so this is a very common essay periodontal ligament so we have not done so we are into our cells now we go to the defense cells so defense cells are common defense cells we have mast cell eosinophil and macrophages now we need to study the extracellular substances so we had seen the basic structure the basic origin uh, origin and its shape after that we move to the structural cell structural cell we have Uh, structure in uh, we have cells and extracellular proteins we finished uh, cells now we have extracellular substances now let's see the extracellular substances so extracellular substances we have fibers and ground substances in fibers we have collagen elastic reticular secondary fibers oxytalin fibers and also in different fiber plexus so the collagen fibers are the main fibers which is uh, the basic types are type 1 and type 3 the 70 percentage belongs to type 1 and it is uh, uniformly distributed in the ligament whereas the type 3 which accounts for around 20 percentage found in periphery of sharp piece fibers and type 4 and type 7 which are associated with epithelial cell rest and blood vessels so type 13 which is associated with pdl when the ligament is completely functional and uh, the collagen is gathered to form bundles and approximately 5 micrometer diameter and these bundles are termed as principal fibers so principal fibers are very important uh, the next video i'll be doing the principal fibers so the within each collagen bundle the subunits are present which is known as collagen fibrils okay so fibrils combine to form fibers now we have uh, the turnover rate of collagen this is uh, faster than all other connective tissue collagen present in the connective tissue because it is highestly seen in periodontal ligament the turnover of collagen and the rate appears to be highest towards the uh, root apex and the collagen on both side has slower turnover rate than that on the bone side when it shows where it shows higher turnover rate so towards the bone side it has having higher turnover rate and now we are moving on to ground substances principal fibers will be dealt in next video the major glycosaminoglycans are chondroitin sulfate dermatin sulfate heparin sulfate hyaluronic acid and keratin sulfate so glycoproteins glycoproteins we have various type fibronectin these glycoproteins are densely uh, packed proteins with extracellular matrix and they have been localized in the calcified sections of human periodontal ligament the most common is fibronectin it promotes the attachment of cells to substratum especially to collagen it is expressed strongly along attachment sites of pdl collagen fibers to cementum but not bone 
In addition to its function, it is also having functions such as blood coagulation, wound healing and chemotaxis. So it promotes cell addition to collagen. It is associated with collagen fibers to cementum. Next we have tenacin. It is also known as cytotactin. It, it, it is the other glycoprotein identified in the periodontal ligament. It is found mostly in healing wounds. Unlike fibronectin, it is not uh, uniformly distributed throughout the PDL, but is concentrated between the less densely packed collagen fibers near cementum and alveolar bone. So, laminin is a glycoprotein component of basement membrane of epithelial cell trust of molasses, which has properties like cell addition, migration, and differentiation. So these are the basic uh, extracellular substances uh, which are glycosaminoglycans, we have many types and also the glycoproteins. Now let's move on to the principal fibers of periodontal ligament. So periodontal principal fibers. Okay, so these fibers are collagenous uh, in nature and it follows a wavy pattern. So you can see a wavy pattern uh, when viewed in a longitudinal section. Okay, this is a cross section. This is the longitudinal section. So you can see a wavy pattern. So they are thought to contribute the regulation of mineralization and tissue cohesion at sites of increased biomechanical strain. So when there is a strain, so in orthodontic movement, when there is strain and stress, there will be remodeling and changes in the periodontal ligaments or the fibers. So we have basically five groups, principal fibers. They are alveolar crest group, horizontal group, oblique group, apical group and interradicular group. It's a very important uh, subtopic in periodontal ligament that may it might be asked as a short note or a long essay. So let's see the five principal fibers, alveolar crest, horizontal group, oblique group, apical group and interradicular group. So I have drawn all these. The green color is apical. The black color is oblique. The pink color is horizontal. The violet is interradicular. The orange is alveolar crestal. So let's see one by one. Alveolar crest group is extends obliquely from cementum. This is a cementum. Just beneath the junctional epithelium to the alveolar crest and to the fibrous layer of periosteum covering the alveolar bone. So this is the alveolar bone and it is a crest. So it is starting from the cementum that is obliquely you can see this is not horizontal this is not perpendicular this is at an angle okay so this is oblique this is horizontal this is oblique so it extends from cementum just beneath the junctional epithelium and to the alveolar crest so this is alveolar crest and to the fibrous layer of periosteum covering the alveolar bone so the horizontal fibers they extend from cementum to alveolar bone in horizontal direction at right angle to the long axis of tooth. So this is a long axis of tooth and horizontal is at right angle which is starting from cementum to the alveolar bone. And it occupy 10 to 15 percentage of coronal root surface. Now we have oblique group. Oblique group it is the largest group of periodontal ligament fibers and it is around 80 to 85 percentage of root surface. It extends from cementum in a coronal direction obliquely to bone. So it is extends from cementum going at oblique direction towards the bone. Okay. So this is the alveolar crest group which is running oblique direction. This is the oblique group. It's the largest periodontal ligament fibers and it is running from cementum to alveolar bone. It is around 80 to 85 percentage of total root surface. Now we have apical group. So this is apical group. The apical fibers radiate in a rather irregular fashion from cementum from cementum to the apical region of socket and they do not 
occur in incompletely formed roots. So these may occur in incompletely formed roots, but apical will not occur until and unless the root formation is complete. So this is uh, going in irregular fashion from the cementum to the alveolar to the socket. Okay, so this is apical group. And the last one is interradicular group. So this is the interradicular group, this violet one. They fan out from cementum to the tooth in the forcation areas of multi-rooted tooth. Okay, so this is like multi-rooted tooth. They fan out from cementum to the forcation areas. Now let's see what are the functions of these fibers. The alveolar crests are involved in retaining the tooth in the socket which opposes lateral forces forces and it prevents extrusion and intrusion extrusion is moving away from the socket and intrusion is moving towards the socket so it prevents extrusion and intrusion of tooth protect deeper periodontal ligament structures the horizontal group is restraining the lateral tooth movement whereas the oblique group which bear the vertical masticatory stresses and transform them into tension on alveolar bone and resist intrusive forces. So intrusive forces is towards the apex. So it resists vertical masticatory forces. And the next one is apical group. So the basic function of apical group fibers are it prevents tooth tipping and it resists luxation. It protects uh, blade, lymph and now supplies to the tooth since it is at the apical position and the interradicular group which uh, helps in resisting tipping, talking and relaxation movements of the tooth. So these are the principal fibers of uh, periodontal ligament. It's a very important uh, topic. So alveolar crest, horizontal, oblique, apical and interradicular. You need to draw this picture very neatly and explain the origin and its end and the basic functions. Now we have various other fibers that is uh, Sharpies fibers. We already seen the Sharpies fibers. They are collagen bundles of periodontal ligament embedded into cementum and alveolar bone. The orientation is similar to that of adjacent periodontal ligament bundles and they are more numerous but smaller at their attachment into cementum than alveolar bone. These fibers in a cellular cementum will be fully mineralized but in cellular cementum it is partially mineralized and few Sharpies fibers pass uninterruptedly through bone of alveolar process which is known as transalveolar fibers. So transalveolar fibers are nothing but Sharpies fibers which pass uninterruptedly through bone of alveolar process. And the next one is intermediate plexus. So intermediate plexus in the beginning it was believed that principal fibers follow a wavy course from cementum to bone and are joined in the mid region of the periodontal space giving rise to a zone of distinct appearance which is known as intermediate plexus. So which is starting from cementum to bone in a wavy course at the middle region a peculiar appearance periodontal space giving a zone of distinct appearance which is known as intermediate plexus. In recent time it does uh, the concept has a little bit changed. So the recent concept is that fibers cross the entire width of periodontal space but branches are uh, branches and join neighboring fibers to form a complex three-dimensional network. So forming a three-dimensional network is the reason for that peculiar appearance of that mid region. Okay. Next is the elastic fibers. Elastic fibers, there are three types of elastic fibers which are histochemically and ultra structurally different. They are mature elastic fibers, eulin fibers and oxytalin fibers. Eulin fibers and oxytalin fibers have been described as immature elastic fibers. 
so mature elastic fibers they consist of microfibrillar component which is surrounding an amorphous core of elastin protein whereas the oxytalin fibers they are microfibrils which run in apico coronal direction to bend and attach to cervical third of fruit and this uh, the function of oxytalin fibers basically unknown but it has a role in supporting blood vessels of periodontal ligament and there is also tooth supporting function and eulanin fibers eulanin fibers are bundles of microfibrils embedded in small amount of amorphous elastin their basic function is regulate vascular flow and role in tooth support and facilitate fibroblast attachment and migration the reticular fibers uh, they are immature collagen fibers uh, with uh, straining properties and are related to basement membrane of blood vessels and epithelial cells which is adjacent to periodontal ligament whereas the secondary fibers they represent the newly formed collagenous element but still it is not incorporated into the principal fibers so located between these principal fibers they are basically non directional and randomly oriented they appear to transverse the periodontal ligament space in corona apical and are often associated with the vasculature and nervous elements path so that's all about principal fibers so we have seen the principal fibers and the other fibers so next we have uh, the functions of periodontal ligament so principal fibers are very important question uh, it might be asked as short essay or long essay and even a short note either any group of principal fibers so i'll come up with functions of periodontal ligament thank you so now we are into the last segment of our periodontal ligament so this session is about functions of periodontal ligament so there are basically five types of functions physical functions formative and remodeling function nutritional function homeostatic function and sensory functions in physical functions the first thing is it provides a soft tissue casing to protect the vessels and nerves from injury by mechanical forces so it protects it because it act as a casing okay and protects the underlying nerves and vessels the second fun physical function is it is transmitting the occlusal forces to the bone okay this bone it transmitted the force is happening at the occlusal side and it is transmitted to the bone so when there is a force so when there is a force it will be transmitted to the bone okay so it will be transmitted to the bone and attachment of teeth to the bone as we had seen and maintenance of the gingival tissue in their proper relationship with the teeth and resistance to the impact of occlusal forces so they are the physical functions it provides casing it transmit forces it attach the teeth to the bone it maintain the gingival tissues and it resist the impact of occlusal forces so basically there are various theories which explains this the forces how the force is transmitted to the bones through periodontal ligament the first theory is tensional theory then the visco elastic theory and one more theory we have thixotropic theory so what is tensional theory tensional theory says when uh, a force is applied to the crown okay so principal fibers first unfold and straighten so these fibers unfold and straighten then transmit the force to the alveolar bone okay which causes elastic deformation of the bone socket then finally the alveolar bone has reached its limit the load is transmitted to the basal bone so this is alveolar bone then we have a basal bone that is mandible and maxilla so that is a tensional theory it is basically says that the principal fibers of periodontal ligament are the major factors in supporting the tooth and transmitting the forces to the bone okay so 
the principal fibers unfolds it transmits to the alveolar bone alveolar bone elastic formation changes happens and it reaches a limit then it transmit to the basal bone but many investigators find this theory insufficient to explain the experimental evidence then came the viscoelastic theory according to this theory what happens when a force is applied on the tooth there is a change in extracellular fluid so extracellular fluid which uh, fluid from periodontal ligament uh, escapes to this marrow spaces okay because the tooth will be compressed when force is there tooth will be compressed so fluid will be escaping to the marrow spaces so depletion of fluid so the fibers absorbs and it becomes tightened so fluid will be into this marrow spaces the fibers absorb the pressure and it tightens so there will be blood vessel stenosis so arterial back pressure created ballooning of vessels and then passage of blood ultra filtrates into the tissues so the lost fluid replenished so this is a viscoelastic theory when force applied the fluid enters into marrow spaces then there will be tightening of this uh, fibers blood vessel stenosis arterial back pressure created ballooning of vessels then passage of blood ultra filtrates into the tissues so the lost fluid replenished so according to this theory the displacement of tooth is largely controlled by the fluid movements with fibers having only secondary role but tensional theory was explaining the primary cause is due to the principal fibers so there is a big difference between tensional theory and viscoelastic theory viscoelastic theory is a accepted one and the next theory we have thixotropic theory so it says that the pdl has rheologic behavior of a thixotropic gel thixotropic gel we have uh, seen in fluorides when it applies pressure it becomes liquid we apply pressure it becomes gel when there is no pressure it is semi solid again so this is commonly used uh, technique in fluoride application fluoride gel application mostly they are in semi solid state but when we put it in the trays and apply pressure it becomes liquid or it becomes a gel type and it enters into the internal spaces so the presence of organized collagen fibers makes this theory unacceptable okay so the most accepted one is viscoelastic theory and the second function is formative and remodeling the cells of pdl which participate in formation and resorption of cementum and bone which occurs in physiologic tooth movement accommodation of periodontium to occlusal forces and also in repair of injuries and remodeling the three dimensional organization of fiber meshwork is adapted to accommodate for positional change of tooth when there is a fun changes in functional state happens it relates to the adaptability of periodontal ligament tissues both these process can occur simultaneously and may therefore be indistinguishable the formation and remodeling so this pdl is constantly undergoing remodeling all cells and fibers are broken down and replaced by new bone or new ones and mitotic activity can be observed in fibroblast and other cells third function is nutritional pdl supplies nutrients to cementum bone gingiva by the blood vessels which provide all the anabolites and other substances to the cementum bone and gingiva and which removes catabolites fourth function is homeostatic which is the adaptability to rapidly changing applied forces and its capacity to maintain its width at constant diameter that is a constant diameter throughout the life 
It is evident that the cells of PDL have the ability to resorb and synthesize extracellular substances of connective tissue, alveolar bone and cement. So that is homeostatic property. Then we have sensory function. Though PD, the periodontal ligament is ab ab abundantly supplied with sensory nerve fibers, which is capable of repair of transmitting tactile pressure and pain sensation by the trigeminal pathway. So basically four types of neural terminations are seen. Most efficient in proprioceptive mechanism. So the four neural terminations are free nerve endings, then roughly like mechanoreceptors which is seen in the apical area and mesonous corpuscles which is seen at the middle third and spindle like pressure and vibration endings which is also seen at apex so which are the four one is free nerve endings which is made basically elicit pain and roughness uh, mechanoreceptors which is seen at the apical area uh, mesonous corpuscles mechanoreceptors seen at the middle third and spindle like pressure and vibration endings which is also seen at apex now we need to study the age changes in periodontal ligament so what are the changes happening over the age so increase in collagen fibrosis and decreasing in cellularity there will be areas of hyalinization the sporadic mineralization of fibers may also occur decrease in the number of periodontal fibers cellularity and formation of multinucleated fibroblasts decrease in collagen synthesis the surface of periodontal alveolar bones are jacked and uneven and become irregular in nature replacement of some of the pdl space by fat cells so there are many changes happens as age progresses and width of periodontal ligament space for non-functioning teeth it is narrower than that of functional teeth and with increasing age less teeth are present the force acting on the remaining teeth may increase and an increasing width of the periodontal ligament space with age seen with those particular teeth so hmm, that is all about periodontal ligament functions we have five functions physical formative remodeling nutritional homeostatic sensory functions and the tensional theory, viscoelastic theory and thixotropic theory we have seen. And the most accepted one is viscoelastic theory that is saying the fluid movements is the cause for transmission of force. Now, last but not the least, we need to study the blood supply which is basically inferior and superior alveolar arteries which has three sources like apical vessels that is a dental artery which supply dental pulp then the transalveolar vessels transalveolar vessels which is uh, penetrating vessels from alveolar bone and the third one is intraseptal vessels which is uh, anastomosing vessels from the gingiva okay and now supply we have sensory and autonomic nerves that is basically trigeminal nerve. The nerve endings we have four types roughness endings, mesonous corpuscles, free nerve endings also we have seen, and encapsulated spindle type. Roughness uh, endings found near the root apex it appear as dendritic and in terminal, terminal expansion among the PDL fiber bundles. They are mechanoreceptors. Mesonous corpuscles seen at mid root for tactile perception encapsulated spindle type which is a temperature receptor associated with root apex the lymphatic drainage which uh, just goes which follow the course of blood vessels okay so that's all about periodontal ligament we had covered in four sessions the first session was uh, the basic structure its formation Second session was its cells, extracellular material. Third session was the principal fibers. And the last session was about the function, age changes, blood supply, nerve supply and lymphatic drainage. 
so we finished parental ligament it was a lengthy chapter there will be lots of questions will be asked so hope you understood this topic so we have covered gingiva and periodontal ligament those are the soft tissues of periodontium now we'll move on to the cementum and alveolar bone which are the two hard tissue components of periodontium okay so i'll come up with cementum in my next session thank you